Today I want to talk to you guys about Akron, Ohio. Akron is a popping cash flow market, folks. And I got a lot of investors who come to me looking for the best cash flow markets. One of those is my main man, Phil, out-of-state investor. You are in Vegas, but you want to look at Ohio, uh, all, all the cash flow markets, right? There's like a ton of them, right? You got Youngstown, you got Cleveland, you got Columbus, you got Cincinnati, you got Toledo, and you got Akron, okay? I have a property for you today, Phil, that I think is going to make a ton of money. It is a duplex that I believe we're going to be able to generate $2,200 a month in rent for a purchase price of about $105,000. Can't do that in Vegas, baby. Let's check out the numbers. I am James Wise, and I am here to help you make money. I'm going to be running the numbers on a real deal. You want to be here. Yeah, we're going to go out of state, but of course, you know my team's going to take care of that. Let's check it out. All right, y'all. We're checking out Akron today, boy. Akron. It's a good time. It's a good time down there in Akron, folks. Over by the University of Akron. That's where this particular property is. Nothing but a good time. I even got my, my party shirt on, okay? My party shirt, y'all. Gots to have a party shirt. As a matter of fact, I used to do a little bit of partying down by this house, down by the University in Akron back in the day. So much partying, I ended up in a drunk tank truck, arrested. More on that later, okay? Now, this particular house, it is a duplex, okay? And what I like about this particular duplex... Number one, I like the location. It's very, very close uh, to the University of Akron. But we're going to get into that, some of that stuff in a second, right? Because there are some cons to that, too. Part of this neighborhood's a little sketchy. Uh, but before I get into all that jazz, yo, I want to just go through the property, okay? So we have two tenants, and they're, they're paying below market rents. Before I even go through those uh, interior photos, just want you to see. This is a side-by-side, -side, guys, and that's incredibly important, right? One unit other unit right this is a monster you get the front or you get the whole upstairs downstairs separate basements the interior pictures are not really great they don't really show us a lot they're just like super zoomed in on the furnace and stuff which is cool i mean we need to know that information but you don't get to see the layout but essentially we have like monster units right this is a 4-1 this is a 4-1 right and monster units are going to be really good for the two types of tenants we're going to be trying to attract with this property. Tenant number one, party and college kids. Tenant number two, Section 8 tenants. Both of those tenants are going to pay a massive premium based on the units being huge, right? So the fact that this uh, is like an eight-bedroom duplex, that's going to make us a lot of money, right? Uh, quickly, you got a furnace here, just so you know. This is probably like 25 years old. Updated electrical. Looks like they had some structural issues with their foundation. These houses that down there, they're like 100, 100 years old or so. So, like, that's not surprising. They had some structural issues and they rebuilt the wall, right? So that's pretty good for you. That's, that's what you like to see, right? Uh, another furnace, probably 30, 35, 20, 25, 30 years old. I'm sure it's probably the same age as the other one. That one just looks a little rough. It's a little, like, rusty. But I'm sure they're both, like, 25, 30 years old. Now, furnaces, y'all. They last about 30 years. Uh, right now, the cost for Holton Wise to replace furnace for you guys is about 3,500 bucks. So when you get this property inspected, right, because you're going to get all the information from me here in this video, and that's one step of the due diligence process. The next step, y'all, uh, is to actually get a home inspector to get in there. And they're going to tell you when they see those furnaces, they're going to say, God, furnaces are beyond their useful life. Recommended the HVAC tech come in and check them out. You don't need to do that, folks. I just told you, they're 25, 30 years old. They last 30 years. So what that means is uh, you're on borrowed time, right? If we're playing uh, baseball, so to speak, right? You're in like inning 13. Show's going to be over just like that, okay? So you have these furnaces. Know that at any point in time, they're going to break. And then when they do break, it doesn't like make any reasonable sense to fix them you would just replace them right so that's what you need to know this hot water tank looks pretty new hot water tanks last about 15 years a little bit of water in the basement maybe coming from the hot water tank maybe coming from the walls that's what the inspector will have to tell us in either scenario it's not that big of a deal it's not living space down there it's just to house 
the mechanicals and like a little bit of tenant storage, right? Uh, but as far as the hot water tanks go, folks, those cost about 1500 for us to replace. They last about 15 years. And then you see the kitchen and one of the units, not really that updated. Uh, it's a little dated. And then just like a, a, like a super zoomed in photo of like a wall closet cubby thing in one of the upstairs like bedrooms. I don't, I don't know why they put that in there. That, that photo provides us no value. But the value we are going to get at this property is because it's huge, because it's a side-by-side, -side, and because of its location, right? Now, duplexes are awesome. I always – I love duplexes, right? That's two rent checks for one roof. But like 95% of the duplexes in Akron, they're going to be up-down duplexes, right? Uh, when you get the opportunity to buy a side-by-side, -side, you got to take it, man, because side-by-sides, tenants stay longer. Uh, that means fewer turnovers and the um, – uh, what you might call it? The the properties themselves are able to be bigger, and they feel more like a house. So you're going to get more rent. Now, when you have college kids going to the University of Akron, they're still going to turn over every year, okay? But the other tenant base I said here is going to be Section 8 tenants. So you get a Section 8 tenant, you can get them to stay long term, right? By the way, the address is 124-126 South Maple Street, right? And we are smack dab next to the University of Akron, right? You are right down there. Boom, right there. University of Akron, baby. So your two tenants, college kids and Section 8 tenants. So like I said, I told you earlier, I'd tell you the story. A lot of college kids, a lot of partying. Back in the day when your boy Jay Wise was 20, I think this happened to me. Ah, dude, I don't even remember. This is like six, six, five, 16 years ago. Yeah, I'm... Yeah, it's like 16 years ago. I'm 20 years old, and it's <laughs> my birthday is in October, and uh, it's like it's very close to October, dude. It's like August, maybe September, uh, somewhere in that range. Um, school's back in session, so probably late August, early September, somewhere in there, I believe. Uh, school's back in session, and there's like a big party culture down there. Okay, kids just just be going crazy, and you know, at this time, I'm a kid. I'm going. You know, crazy, having a, a good time. And uh, there's a lot of streets where they're just be like frat house, frat house, party house, party house, party house. And, like, there'd be, like, like full-on, like, street parties, right? And, you know, kids would just be walking, like, down the street, right, with, like, coolers of beer and whatnot. And you would just, like, go in and out of, like, you know, 10 different, like, houses, uh, like, big, huge house parties, like, just massive parties, right, uh, throughout the whole thing, and that's, like, very common down there, and um, it's so common that they actually had, like, uh, the day, that, the one day, that, this particular day that we were down there, they had, like, the police down there, and there was actually, like, a film crew, I don't know if it was for, like, cops or a show like that, I never actually seen the show, but I did see cameras and, like, producer guys, like, in and around, I mean, it's dark, probably pretty drunk uh there's just like a lot going on but what ended up happening is the cops just started rounding up uh people that were walking from house to house if they had an open container right and i was 20 so i was a couple months shy of my 21st birthday right so i i was given like an underage drinking ticket but uh they ended up like having so many people that they were arresting they had like this big van and they would just like arrest you, handcuff you, and then put you in this van. So we, I was, we were in a van uh, with like 20, 30 other people. And there's just so many like drunk college kids. And even there are some people that were of age, but they got charged with open containers. And then they put us all uh, in like one big, huge cell. All the guys and then all the girls were, like, in another holding cell. And it was a bunch of drunk kids. I mean, I think at some point people were, like, playing Marco Polo. There's, like, 30 of us in there. It's just a – this is a – it was honestly kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. It was kind of fun. Uh, I mean, not that I condone, uh, I guess, crimes. But it, it was a good time. Uh, everybody that was in there, you know – you get charged with like open container or uh, an underage drinking ticket. I believe we were in jail for like, you know, four hours maybe. And then after that, you had to drive back to Akron to go to court. And then I think we were all issued, like, I think my fine was somewhere between like 50 and like $200. And, and that was it, right? But you get a lot of that kind of stuff going, going down when you're doing college rentals, right? So that's going to be like 
one potential tenant base that you guys could rent this property to, right? Uh, do college kids eventually, you know, do they break stuff sometimes? Yes. Do some of their parties get a little bit out of control? Uh, yes. But does the rent come in very consistently? You bet your ass it does, right? I've made a ton of money uh, renting properties to college kids, right? And the other tenant base you get in this general area is going to be, you get a lot of Section 8 tenants over here too. And I will be honest with you guys, the neighborhood itself is very, very low income. It's like a mix. It's like sketchy. Uh, like a little bit of blight, uh, but then you got the college kids too, and you know, you just there's a ton of demand out there. So I just want you guys to be aware. Uh, this is not what I would call like a B grade neighborhood. It's definitely like maybe like a D grade neighborhood. But if you have Section Eight tenants or college kids, uh, you're gonna be able to get a ton of rent consistently. Now, currently, uh, the current owner is renting them on month to month. To tenants uh, paying 660 and 625. This owner is way, 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 way missing the mark, folks. That's the cool thing about real estate investing, right? When you're buying these like small multifamily properties, you're not dealing with professional investors often, right? Oftentimes you're dealing with people that just like have a one random property and they don't really know what's going on, right? Maybe back in the day. When I was 20 and I was thrown in the drunk tank, maybe 660 would have been a legitimate uh, monthly rent for a freaking four bed, one bath property, but not 16 years later in 2023, y'all. No, no, no. $1,100 a month is what each of those units would rent, whether that be to a tenant on a Section 8 voucher, because when you have a Section 8 voucher, the more bedrooms you get, OK, like if you're a tenant, you have Section 8, right? Based on how many children the government the Section 8 program, you will get a, 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 a two bedroom voucher, a three bedroom voucher, four bedroom voucher and so on and so forth. Right. So if you have a four bedroom unit, guys, you get the tenants with the bigger vouchers that pay more money. Right. So you could easily get eleven hundred from them and you bet your ass it's no no problem to get eleven hundred from them drunk some bitch college kids. Right. So twenty two hundred bucks a month now. You guys seen the units. Uh, they don't look super great, but that is what market rent is. Do I think you could kick those two tenants out and then just slap a Section 8 tenant or a college kid in those units right now with no renovation? No, not at all. You definitely would have to renovate them. But who's to say you can't just do rental increases on the current tenants because – the the, the the rents they're paying are like basically half of what they're worth. And that's not because the units are like outdated. I think that's just because you have a, a seller or investor who doesn't really know what's going on, right? So is it possible that uh, being that you have your tenants – who are on month to month, is it possible that you can just give them a 30-day notice and just basically double their rent? Yes, that is possible. It's legal. There are no issues to that. Is it practical thinking you can get their rents from like 660 to 1100 with just one increase and they won't move out? No, probably not, right? I would say your best bet is to, to increase those rents slowly because the ultimate goal should be to get them up to market rent without having to spend any money on renovations. That would be great. Uh, but we can't tell you for sure if that's going to happen. I know damn well it's going to be pretty easy to get a little bit more money out of them. I'd probably maybe go like 200 bucks. And then 200 bucks the following year and, you know, whatever's left after that, right? Uh, I don't think you go from like six and a quarter to 11 right away. I think that forces a turnover. Then you probably got to drop like 15, 20K fixing up the unit, right? So I would try to do it slowly because they can't rent units like this for those prices right now anywhere else. But they're, they're not the best looking units. So you, you would like to avoid doing a renovation if possible. But eventually uh, you'll get tenants up to 1100 because that is where it's at right now. And if you do that, man, the cash flow numbers on this thing are insane. $2,200 a month comes in. I think you'll spend about 946 a month. These are averages, folks. That's an NOI of about 1253 or like 15 Gs a year. As far as price goes, 125 is what they're asking, but they've been on the market for a very long time. They've been on the market for 160 days. I think a lot of people looking at this property are probably a little confused by the extremely low rents, or they're probably thinking, yeah, my only two tenants here, I'm in this neighborhood. It's kind of, it's a little sketchy. Like there's just a little bit of a blight and crime. And then just like a bunch of idiot college kids drunk all the damn time. I don't know if I want to deal with this. And the rents are really low, right? I feel like a lot of investors are really missing the ball because yeah, 
both of those two kinds of tenants, Section 8 tenants, college kid tenants, both of those tenants are difficult tenants to deal with, folks. But hey, that's the beauty of Holton Wise. We handle that for you. We will handle all the property management for you. And you best believe if they start acting up, man, we will knock some sense into them. That is what we do, y'all. Check out the Tenants from Hell show. Uh, if you need to know more about what I'm talking about, dealing with a difficult tenant base is what we do. We are experts in this. We can handle that, right? So if you're an investor, out-of-state investor, you know, whatever it is, whole wise, we are here to do the dirty work for you to handle it. And because a lot of other people might not be in that same boat as you, I think we can get the property even cheaper. I'd like to negotiate this thing down. I'd like to beat these sellers up a little bit. I'd like to pick it up for you for 105000 You do that, you put in twenty six. bank kicks in seventy eight. you get them tenants up to market rent without a turnover. You're looking at a cash on cash return of 41%. Folks, that is why people come to Akron, Ohio. Properties like this make sense. That is why you should focus on Section 8. That is why you should focus on properties near universities, right? That's a draw. This is an area that's always going to have people who want to rent houses. You have like an unlimited revolving door of new customers coming in, paying a premium because you have a big unit, right? Well, two big units, and it's close to a uh, a college. Big unit, I, I yeah, I was I was laughing. I sh I try I was gonna maybe try to work a joke in there, but it's it's too far gone now. Okay, it's too far gone. We are far past the point of making a big unit. Penis, jo penis. Okay, penises. I was gonna say something because big unit is like another name for big penis. I was gonna work in some dick jokes. Okay, but I don't have any dick jokes at the moment. However, I will tell you this. Sausage Party, the movie Sausage Party, guys, it is not an appropriate movie for a four-year-old, okay? My wife tried to tell me that prior to watching it with my son five times. Uh, I did not listen five times. Now, he's got uh, many parts of the movie basically memorized, and, you know, there's that part at the end of the movie uh, where the douche... Uh, voiced by like Nick Kroll jumps up the human's butt and then Seth Rogen's little sausage is like hanging down off the human. If you guys seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And the human's got like a gun and he's trying to shoot it and he's like, I'm gonna shoot you. He's basically trying to shoot his dick off. And then he's like, I'm gonna shoot my dick off. And you know, the sausage looked like his dick, right? And I tell you all this to tell you, you watch that with your, your four year old son five times. Eventually you're gonna just like walk in on him in the backyard screaming, I'll shoot your dick off at your tree. Right? Because that's what he does now. He just screams, I'll shoot your dick off at a tree. Uh, that might be why my wife told me that that was an inappropriate movie to watch with a four-year-old child. So you live and you learn. When I was young, I lived and I learned. I learned uh, that, you know, you can't just carry beer from frat house to frat house uh, in Akron, Ohio. And then when I was older, I realized that, you know, if you watch Sausage Party with a four-year-old, he's going to have more dick jokes than I have, right? And uh, this all... This whole story came about because, you know, I didn't have a good dick joke for when I was saying big unit. But anyway, back to the property, back to the task at hand. I think a lot of people are going to miss the ball here, and this thing really does make money, right? It's a little bit of hard work, you know, some blue-collar tough, get-your-hands-dirty kind of work, guys. But that's what Holton Weiss does, and properties like this have made me millions of dollars, Okay. And they can make you a ton of money if you're willing to put in the work and deal with the riffraff. Let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.